Hey, this is Jeff Emery with Tech Zulu with Don Box, and we're reporting for Bytes by MSDN. How you doing today? I'm doing awesome. Great, glad to hear it. So we got a couple of easy questions for the summer group, and uh, the first one is, what is the coolest technology you've come across lately? Uh, I assume that one I don't work on. Okay. So whichever you want. I mean, Oslo is cool. You can talk about that, or yeah. I mean, look, I love Oslo a lot, um, but um, that's the expected answer. Um, the I, I tell you, the the, the thing that's going to be the, the the wave you can start to see forming, which I spend a lot of time looking at now, is um, languages that do patterns and pattern matching. Mm. So if you think back to uh, like two years ago, right, um, Lambda took off, right, and every language except Java had to have Lambda, right? You know, basically. Embed, you know, functional, you know, functions as objects, functions as values, um, and you know, C sharp picked them up, VB picked them up. Um, it was the hot trend; everybody was talking about them. Python has them, Ruby has them, um, and uh, so I, you kind of we're, we're at the tail end of that phase. You know, pretty much every language has come to terms with it, um, uh, and now if you look at kind of the emerging languages or the languages that are, that are getting hot now. Um, Pattern matching turns out to be the big next. I believe it's going to be the next big feature. Um, and so, if you look at languages like Scala or F Sharp, um, which are basically just cribbing off of old stuff like ML, um, I think that's really um, kind of. I'm just fascinated to watch it take off. And the reason it's fascinating is you basically take these old ideas that are you know 20 plus years old, um, and you know to a new generation of programmers, um, they're kind of becoming wow. There's this new shiny bobble, and they go off and do stuff with it. It's really fun. Where would you recommend sending people to learn about that? Uh, go learn F Sharp, um, go learn Scala, or you know, arguably I'd say go learn ML. You know, go get the Ullman book, which is Elements of ML Programming. Awesome, one of the best, 10 best written programming books ever. What about like top technologists? Like who do you, who do you subscribe to in that regard? Um, I like watching what Martin Fowler does. Um, he's, kind, he's enough in my space that it's relevant to me, um, and I just like the way he thinks. Who are your top two Twitters? Uh, definitely Martin. Um, I've been looking at Pogue. Um, Pogue seems to be very prolific, um, and he kind of shows up on my radar, and I tend to chase his stuff down. What part would you play in Star Trek? If you could choose a part to play, who would you choose? I'd like to be Sulu. Sulu? Yeah, I mean, the, the whole, you know, the, the fencing thing, the, the uh, there's something about the Sulu character I like. Um, you know, the whole Spock Kirk thing, it's such a cliche, right? right? Um, but the, uh, I don't know, Sulu just seems to be kind of above the fray. What is on your non-technical read watch uh, Oh, it's list? easy. I, I, I got this book. I haven't had a chance to read it yet, um, which is um, Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies. Nice. So Pride and Prejudice uh, was the first name of the book, which Jane Austen wrote ages ago. They found the original text, the original manuscript, which turns out had a lot of zombie material in it. But the public back in, you know, a century or two ago wasn't ready to, to really... Uh, grok the whole zombie thing. So they kind of edited out all the zombie content and just released it as Pride and Prejudice. It's kind of like the director's cut. How are you, uh, when you go out to learn something new, like closures, what are you using for that? Are you using uh, blogs, videos, books, podcasts? I use my favorite search engine and just start chasing down links and reading. And then um, if it's something I can actually get bits for, I'll go write programs in it. How does it feel to be, be the first blogger for Microsoft? It's, it's so funny. I used to be um, very prolific and very public. Yeah. Um, and every year I get more and more reclusive. I'm almost like a monk in a monastery. Um, look, it was a fun time. Um, you know, that, that was a very interesting period of time. Um, right now, I, I just spend most of my time either uh, you know, building my software or you know, raising my kids and spend time with my wife. So I actually don't have a lot of time to blog. Um, but it was, it was definitely a lot of fun back in the day. And you know, try and, I remember like RSS was just so fun and there were just so many there were so many things that were you know it's the Richard Gabriel premise you know the worse is better um, RSS should have failed for so many technical reasons but it didn't and that uh, was prolific well now it's kind of passe isn't it I mean now doesn't everybody do Twitter and <sighs> I there's this huge, I had this huge discussion with somebody about is, is RSS dead you know like why would I go to your blog and I'm just like because I don't I can't explain everything in 140 characters really yeah no take more time Take 140 more. characters, dude. That's that's an eternity. That, that's 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 tomes. Yeah, I just yeah, code samples doesn't really fit in there. So maybe like you know the, <laughs> the header. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah, I did a poem 
uh, recently where I just like wrote a, I don't know, it was like a 40 line poem on Twitter. Just like I was sitting there doing it. But you're right, you do have to do it. You have to break it out. Uh, it's but, interesting. I'll have to come find that. Yeah. That'll be fun. That should be, a, that'd be a great Visual Studio add-on, which would be you take the selection of code and then you would um, extract it and tweet oh, each individual one, line. 140 characters at a time. Wouldn't that be awesome? Wow. And you know, the other cool thing about it is um, it would get programmers to stop write these effing, you know, 200 character long lines of code. Because um, they want at least one line per code. Yeah, yeah, you know, they just you start typing and the editor scrolls over, right? You really want to like, you know, keep it down to like 90 characters Publishing or code on Twitter. I think we have a concept here. That'd be awesome. Uh, awesome. Sweet. Well, this is Jeff Emery with TechZulu reporting for Bytes on MSDN. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.